you will not be charming. You will not be memorable from a, a good point of view if somebody remembers you as that, that lady I had that big, big argument with the other night. Welcome back to the Fascinating Womanhood channel, where we talk about all things that have to do with femininity and relationships. We're excited to be here today with Dixie and Dylan Forsyth. Hi. Hi. Dixie, today we are talking about do's and don'ts, about being a good conversationalist. Why are we talking about this today? You know, um, some of you know, a lot of you probably don't. I was extremely shy growing up, very shy, and learning to interact and socialize with boys or men or even other women was was something I had to learn to do. It was really hard. And so understanding and learning about how to converse with other with other people, this is how you learn to have friends. This is how you learn how you acquire not only friends, but boyfriends and romantic relationships. I think it's really important for all of us to learn to be good at it. And I think a lot of us want to be. I think we all want to be good at conversing with other people and making friends. That's the whole the whole point of it. And um, where did these do's and don'ts come from? Research <laughs> and practice. You know, yeah. I researched it, I practiced it. And so we came up with a list of do's and don'ts of things that actually are good. And because there's tons of them, you can weed out the ones that, well, most of us know that. But mm -hmm. uh, there's some things that are just real basic and we try to keep it real basic. You know, a lot of women, also, a lot of women ask us uh, how they can meet men and how they can get men interested in them. And when they're in social gatherings, what do they talk about? And there's a challenge with knowing what to say, what not to say. So this is just a good basic foundation. Okay, perfect. So let's let's go ahead and jump right into all of our do's. This is the mm -hmm. thing that probably the most valuable for me, but you see mm -hmm. what you find the most valuable, valuable for you. A lot of us have trouble remembering people's names. Mm -hmm. And that can get very embarrassing. Have you ever been to a party and you think, oh, no. I'm supposed, I know I've met this person, but I can't remember their name. Now, if it's a really good looking man, chances are you're not going to forget, but somebody else you might. So here's what was uh, taught to me. And I found it very helpful. How to teach yourself to remember other people's names. When you ask a person's name or they tell you their name, first of all, repeat it back. For example, if someone says, and you say, hi, I'm Dixie. What's your name? And then they say, David, for example, you might say, Hi, David. So you repeat it back. And when you repeat something back, it helps you to remember it. It helps to cement it in your head. That isn't enough, though. At least it's not enough for me. It may be enough for you. But the second thing I do is you, if it's somebody that you're afraid you might not remember their name, associate it right away with something else like David. Okay, I knew a, a David so-and-so in high school, and he had bright red hair. Something that that you can connect that to if the person says their name is Gabriel. You might think Angel Gabriel. Even though it, it sounds kind of quirky, in some ways the quirkier the better because you don't tell anybody this. It's just in your own head. Yeah, and that's remember. important. Don't say it out loud. <laughs> don't say it out loud. Oh, yeah. I've had, you might... when, I've had people when they've met me because I have a unique name. They've said Cherry and they repeat it back. Cherry, oh, Cherry Pie. And then I just sit there kind of like, hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, don't repeat it back. But think of it. They might think for you Cherry Pie. And when they see you, it's easier to remember if they've associated it with something else. Remembering someone's name is very powerful because if, if you're the person who someone remembers your name, it's really incredible. That makes you feel wonderful to know that someone remembers. So the, the last tip for remembering names is when you talk to that person, call them by their name several times during the conversation. Like you might say, yeah, Sally, I was thinking of this. Find a way to include their name in the conversation as you're talking with them. It makes them feel like you care about them, but it's also helping you remember their name. Also show interest in the other person. What if you were meeting somebody that was, I don't know, a famous person, a celebrity or anything, a politician, and you would want to know to take that opportunity. You had five minutes with them to get to know as much as you could about them. Well, every single person is unique and valuable. Every single person. So if you show an interest in a person, like, what are you like? That is very appealing because most people don't get 
people showing any interest in them at all, or much, much of any of them, at least not enough. Show a genuine graciousness in accepting compliments. You know, some people aren't or good at giving compliments, but not accepting them. We might say, oh, someone says, you look, you look really nice. Oh, no, I don't. I look terrible. You know, sometimes we think that's modesty. Well, there's, there's the famous one. Oh, you're so-and-so. I've heard so many great things about you. And the person responds, oh, you know, <laughs> they get a little nervous. Yeah. And you can practice being very gracious and say that's very kind of them. Or thank you. That means a lot. And during your conversation, smile as much as you can when it's appropriate. If someone's telling you about a death in the family, then that's not so appropriate. Smiling shows that you are interested in them and that mm -hmm. you, you care about them. Keep consistent eye contact. Don't constantly be looking around. Those are also do's. Use polite words like please, thank you, and excuse me. This may sound very basic, but a lot of times we just sort of forget about those things. Use open-ended questions in your conversations. Instead of saying something like, how are you, which has a one fine, <laughs> fine you know, ask things that are open-ended where they have to actually answer like, uh, what do you do for a living? What do you enjoy doing in your, in your spare time? How do you feel is always open-ended because mm -hmm. there, there, isn't, there isn't just a one word answer for it that you think, gosh, this isn't going anywhere. I think that's a big one too for dating. Yes. Uh, yes. So, you know, questions is really good for dating because sometimes it can feel like you're on an interview when you're dating and it can be kind of exhausting and getting into more open-ended questions just allows the other person to kind of feel like they can, you know, get into more of a story. And if they do get into it, like, like say, I like sports or basketball, you can go into a whole direction with that. It can be a whole conversation. And it, so even if you're shy, like I was, you can focus on them. And when you're focused on another person, you're not as self-conscious. You're not thinking, gosh, does my hair look gross? Or, or you know, am I doing the right things or, or whatever? Always try to be pleasant, positive in your conversation. Okay, look for also visual signs and body language. There's a lot of them, ladies, and we're good at multitasking, so you can watch out for this. If he, I, if he rolls his eyes, that's pretty obvious. Taps his feet, pulls out his cell phone, that's pretty obvious too. Or uh, looks is looking around. You may, you, either the conversation isn't that interesting to him, or he, you may have run out of time with that person. You may be engaging too long with them. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, it, their body language, if they're moving a little bit closer to you and leaning in maybe a little bit, it is interesting. That's more of a positive. So body language will tell you a lot about the person. Uh, if they go like this, arms folded, that's a protective thing where they're not wanting to be as open. If they were going like this and they put their arms down, hands down, they're relaxing a little more. So I think females are that way too. If, if, if a male is watching this and kind of trying to apply, I think females are the same way. That's just human body. Yeah. Language, this right? is human, human nature. Yeah. This is human nature. And, and the one other tip to remember is that most people's favorite subject is themselves mm -hmm. because they know so much about it, right? It's, it's human nature. It's human yeah. nature. And if you understand that, and if you're thinking, how can I be, better at being a conversationalist and charming. This is also part of charm. Learn to do this and very quickly you'll be the one everybody wants at parties. You validate people. It's, it's the whole chapter on charm. Nobody can resist being around a charming person and you can become the most charming person in your circle. I've always been amazed at how many friends you have. You have so many friends and you've had a lot of friends throughout your life that you've kept. And so I think this is definitely the subject is really great to hear from you about. Because... Well, I'm just sharing stuff that I learned. My sisters always say, how come you have so many friends around Santa Barbara now that you didn't have before? I have just learned gradually. They say, you have so many friends. And I said, I'm just friendly. But now getting into the don'ts, right? Okay, yeah. Let's jump, let's jump right into the don'ts. Yeah, we don't like those as much. But it, they're important. They're important to learn. Uh, mm -hmm. Don't lecture people. Nobody wants a lecture. Don't give the impression that you have to be right all the time. If you know that something is true and somebody's saying something else, you don't have to prove your point. Mm -hmm. You can let it go. It's really not that big a deal. It's not a great <laughs> idea to monopolize a conversation. And so if you find, I'm talking a lot, 
then you probably need to engage them a little bit more. And then there's the opposite where they do all the talking and you can't get a word in edgewise. That can be a problem, but you can't make people not do that. So it's better in those situations to ask. They may need a lot more validation than even you thought. So you can keep it going by asking them small questions in between that. If somebody's monopolizing the conversation, you've hooked their interest. Don't offer unsolicited advice. <laughs> you know, one thing I've learned is if, if people want to know something, your, your opinion, they will ask. Mm -hmm. And if you offer an opinion that they don't ask, they probably aren't going to take it anyway. I think sometimes too, you can say, may I offer a suggestion? Yes. Yes. You could do that. Don't listen in on conversations that you're not part of, otherwise known as eavesdropping. And it's hard if you, ha if you think you hear your name in that conversation. Just remember, this is not polite. Don't whisper in front of other people. Try not to interrupt. It's hard sometimes, especially if somebody is talking on and on and don't give you a chance to say anything. It's hard, but just remember it. Don't say mean things about people behind their back. It's amazing how things get around. Have you ever done that and then the person finds out you did? How mortifying that is. And you just think, I can't believe yeah. it. Another thing that I, I think happens a lot, maybe this is just with, with me or my circle of friends, but if someone does make a comment, a negative comment about another person, especially if it's someone that you know, the, the first thing that I think of when that happens is, I wonder what they're saying about me. Yeah, you do. And so the best thing for all of us is to be a good example. Another thing that's sometimes hard for us is don't ask really personal questions that you shouldn't be like, is that all your own hair? <laughs> That's not, it's like asking somebody if they had breast implants. You don't ask those things. Or another thing, not as many of us ask that, but are you expecting, and they're not, be really careful of that. It is so horrifying to realize you asked. It's better not to ask. Or on a milder level, someone says, I like your dress. Where did you get it and how much did it cost? Because if they're uncomfortable with saying, I, I I got it at a Goodwill place for $5. You don't want to put anyone on the spot. Some people are proud. There are certain topics. Now, ladies, there are certain topics, unless you know the person well, and that's a caveat. If it's your, if it's your brother or your sister or your parents or somebody, and you know each other well and know each other's stands on things, there are certain things do not talk about, especially when you're getting to know somebody. Money, religion, because those can be hot topics. Politics especially nowadays, really hot topics. And you don't want to end up in an argument with somebody. You really don't. It's not charming at all. Race is, a, is a, one, a topic. A sexual orientation, gender, that, those whole issues. I mean, good grief, if you watch news on television or anywhere, these are subjects they talk about all the time. And they're, and they're always contentious. And so if you can stay away from those subjects, like the plague, unless you know that person and you know you feel the same about politics or, or you're on the same side of the line, then you can. But if you don't know that person, you're getting to know them, stay away from it. And if they bring it up, you can be just very polite and you find out they feel different, just be polite. You've learned that as well, being interviewed so many times on the radio, if they ask you something, isn't that some of the training they, they gave you was to try to change the subject or try to kind of like politely move into... Yeah. Sometimes I feel, sometimes I feel like I'm getting baited. Like, how do you feel about this? And I, and I think I know what you're doing. You can just see yourself getting kind of cornered with something that you cannot possibly please everybody or that you'll be misquoted or something like that. So you can... You can learn to do, politicians do, frankly. Some of you won't be in that situation, but even if you're not out in the public like I am, you might get cornered sometime, and you can learn from them by saying, you know, that's a very good question, but the bigger question is this, and then change it to something that you want to talk about instead of, you know, how do you feel about the death penalty or something? You think, I don't want to go there. I really don't want to go there. You will not be charming. You will not be memorable from a, a good point of view, if somebody remembers you as that, that lady I had that big, big argument with the other night. Oh, like okay, that. so for all you ladies out there who are struggling, especially the shy ones like I was, like I still am really in a lot of ways. I just have kind of learned to how to deal with some of these things. 
this is really exciting because you can learn to be the charming one in the room. You can meet people. You can meet men, men that you're maybe a little bit intimidated of. These are skills that you can learn. These are just, this is not everything. This is just some basic tips on what you can do to be a good conversationalist with someone. You'll come out of your shyness as you're not focused on yourself and not being self-centered. So as you come out, the real you will be able to come out more as you show interest in other people. If you're in a room and you, there's a person, say a nice looking man you'd like to meet, you can think of an, a reason to go up and initiate a conversation with them. It's not necessarily forward as long as you have something that's legitimate that like you say, hi, I'm so-and-so. I was noticing I, I really loved the speech you gave or I really was noticing I love that tie. I just wanted to compliment you on that tie. You can initiate a conversation if you're charming and if it's sincere. And if, he, and if he doesn't want to engage with you, you can just say, I just wanted to say that, and then just, and then just excuse yourself. Okay, well, this has been so helpful. Thank you so much for sharing all of your advice. And for anyone out there that's watching and wants to learn more, Dixie has an amazing book called Fascinating Womanhood for the Timeless Woman that talks a lot about this, this subject, among a lot of other, other subjects. Definitely check it out. I'll attach a link below, as well as link to the workbook that she has that goes along with the book. And we are here every week. So don't forget to check back with us next week and we will see you next time. Bye. Bye.